Hey everyone, it's me, Doomlink, and welcome back to the Dark Souls livestream series. I did a few things off camera actually, so I will be going through what has changed between the last recording and this one. But uh, yeah, it feels good to be back, I suppose. I haven't actually recorded in about a week in this particular game. And um, yeah, I essentially took care of all the farming and grinding that I said that I didn't want to subject you to. Maybe not all of it, but I would say the vast majority of it. To say that I've taken care of all the farming that I said I didn't want to subject you to would be to suggest that I'm probably not going to need to farm anything ever again. That's not true. I think I will probably need to do that, but you can already see one difference, I can imagine, and that is the Boulder Sign Sword sitting at plus 15. Now, it does need to be mentioned that I had some incredible luck while I was grinding for Titanite Chunks. I actually acquired two slabs from Dark Wraiths in about a 40 minute grinding session, which is incredible, especially considering that I was sitting at around 380 item discovery. It was crazy, I mean, I very rarely get slab from, slabs from those guys, they have a very, very low chance to give slabs, and I managed to get two, basically, well, not quite back to back, it wasn't in the same, I guess, uh, round run i don't know how you'd say that you know what i mean you know every time you let's imagine every time you use a homeward bone after you've killed all the dark wraiths that's the end of one round i don't think it was in the same round but i think it was one after the other it wasn't very long after it was like five minutes later i got a second slap it was ridiculous so yeah that was very nice so i think i i think this one here is from the dlc possibly was I sitting on three slabs? I don't recall. I don't think I actually ended up getting the free slab from the um, Undead Asylum. But I might have gotten the one from the Calamite area in the DLC. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit confused with my um, right analog stick for controlling the camera at the moment because I was yesterday playing Sonic 06, which has an inverted axis for that. So that's, um, well, actually, I'm already used to it. I'm used to the correct axis here. I don't feel quite so confused. When I first started moving the camera, it felt a bit odd, but now it's fine again. I, I feel like I can live with all this business. Okay. So yeah, in terms of weapons, I upgraded my lightning flamberge a little bit. I'm not quite willing to use a slab on it just yet. I'm not sure if it's worthwhile. Because again, it's not really a dexterity-based weapon, and I don't know if it's entirely necessary for me to have a strong lightning weapon. For instance, if I want something that's not focused on physical damage for whatever reason, I feel like Quailang's Fury Sword fits that purpose. Whereas the Lightning Flamberge would fit that purpose, but doesn't do it through dexterity, and this is a dexterity build. There's no reason why this weapon is inappropriate. It's just, I don't know, if I'm doing a dexterity build, I'd like to have my weapons get some benefit from dexterity, and in the case of Quailung's Fury Sword, that's a B scaling. So, I find that to be quite significant. And just generally more worthwhile using. Of course, the, <laughs> the original idea was to get this weapon fully upgraded in the standard path. But what would have ended up happening, I believe, is it would have ended up doing only a little bit more damage than the Boulder Sign Sword, but it would be attacking much slower. That was one of the reasons why I decided to infuse it with Thunder in the first place, and then I realised that upon doing that it wouldn't be a dexterity weapon anymore, thus leaving it to be almost a waste of a weapon, but, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that I won't use it. Maybe I will. Uh, Boulder Sign Sword was, of course, the weapon that I was trying to get on camera I think in the second part, and, um, well, second recording for this build, and, yeah, that took a little while to get. In fact, I had, I took more time getting the Boulder Sign Sword than I took getting two slabs from Dark Wraiths <laughs> in my own time. So that was, that was pretty funny. But, uh, not as in, ha-ha, but more like, uh, food for thought. I didn't, um, I didn't have an unpleasant time grinding the Boulder Sign Sword, but now that I have it, it's a pretty solid weapon. It's dealing 372 damage with 38 dexterity. I'll probably be able to get it to 380 or so, 
once I'm done in new game here with upgrading dexterity. I don't know if I'll take dexterity to 40 or 45, I still haven't really decided. Really depends on how I'm feeling with my damage output. But uh, yeah, the weapon attacks very fast, it's got one of my favourite movements, or move sets, I should say. Attack patterns, however you want to refer to that, I think move set is the correct terminology. But um, yeah, really nice move set. Got the two-handed version here. I always prefer the more horizontal swings to the vertical swings, but at the end of the day, these vertical swings are going to be more damaging for the reason that it is a two-handed move set. So there you go. You can see that it is also a thrust with the RT with a two-handed setup. I just really love stabbing with swords. I think it's really nice. So yeah, fast attacking good damage and pure physical as well so again that much pure physical is quite good because it means that you don't have to deal with enemy resistances to element so yeah. Great Scythe is an option you can see that it is dealing a lot more damage than the Boulder Sign Sword but it is going to be attacking a bit slower it makes up for that however by being a much longer ranged weapon so Great Scythe is obviously one of the better dexterity weapons in the game. The only thing that stops me from using it now is the fact that I used it at the beginning of the game. I will start using it again, I think, but I won't immediately start doing that. I'll probably start with the Boulder Sign Sword, seeing as though I haven't actually shown it at all yet, except for me swinging it around here. You know, to be honest, I really shouldn't be doing all this in this location because you guys are probably really, really sick of listening to Andre Evastora smacking his hammer on that anvil, so I'm going to probably go to Filing Shrine at least for now, while I conclude my my discussion with myself. <laughs> it's a discussion with you, but it's not like you're responding, so yeah, discussion with myself. Now, what was I going to say? In terms of where we are continuing from here, I believe we are still we still have yet to venture into the Duke's archives. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Yeah, so we still haven't gone to the uh, the final three locations, which are the Duke's archives, Tomb of the Giants, and um, Lost Isleth. So we will be doing that. Did I end up resting at... No, I did not. So you can see... Um, Daughter of Chaos Bonfire is not there, so I never did actually go that way. That's, well, I did go that way, but I didn't actually rest at the bonfire. I still have this Gold Serpent Ring equipped. I'm glad that I noticed that. Let's put the Wolf Ring on there. We're not going to be grinding anymore. Did I get the Blood Shield a plus 15 on camera? I think I did, didn't I? That was one thing that I did do on camera. Now, I suppose the big objective for us to fulfill now, or at the very least our current goal, is to upgrade these armor pieces. Now, the one thing that stopped me from beginning the process of upgrading these armor pieces was the thought that I could possibly allocate the Twinkling Titan Knight that I have on hand right now to the upgrading of the Gold Tracer, but I don't think it's worthwhile for the reason that I already have a number of weapons to choose from. The Gold Tracer isn't necessarily going to be a weapon that I don't use, but as far as... Upgrading the Gold Tracer now, instead of upgrading my armor, I don't think that would be worthwhile. So you know what I'm going to do, I'm sorry to do this too. But not so sorry, because I did this in the first place, out of consideration for you. I'm going to return to the um, Undead Parish Bonfire I had left in the first place, because I didn't want you to go nuts listening to our friend Andre hammering away. I mean, you guys are probably pretty used to that, what with Bob hammering in the distance in most of my recordings, but to be honest, this is a little more annoying because it's actually in-game sounds that are incidentally much louder than the sound of Bob hammering away, or maybe not quite so... quite so much louder. Alright, so let's go and reinforce our armor, because I think I will just... In fact, I'll upgrade all these pieces... Come on, thank you, d -Pan. It'd be great if you could respond to my input. So, 
There we go. We're going to upgrade all of these pieces exactly once, because that just feels clean. We are sitting on four Twinkling Titanites, so I may as well do that. Unfortunately, I didn't check to see how much my defense was before, but I guess that that was an increase of, like, I don't know, seven defense or something like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know where I pulled that number from. That's a bit random. But, anyway, something within that vicinity, I would guess. It could be as high as 12 or something like that. You know, the idea being that maybe three defense per armor piece, but still, I do... I think that we will have to stick with this defense for a while because we're not going to be able to actually upgrade this until we reach the Twinkling Titanite grinding area, which is essentially after the Duke's Archives. Now, you don't have to do the Duke's Archives first. It's not a requirement, but I always do the Duke's Archives first. For two reasons, usually. The first is... Well, no, it does depend on the build. Sometimes, like, for instance, if I'm doing a magic build, I would want to do the Duke's Archives first because I would have access to crystal spells, crystal magic, whatever you want to call it. And in the case of most builds, I want to access the Twinkling Titanite farming area. As well as that, you can gain access to another Firekeeper's Hole, which is in the cell where Big Hat Logan was being held prisoner being held captive. So, yeah, I feel like there's more in the Duke's archives versus everywhere else. There are a lot of useful things. Why am I going here? I meant to walk to Anolondo. What the hell? How did, I, how did I end up here? Seriously. I've got 15,000 souls at the moment, which is pretty good, but not quite enough to level up at this time. I have reached a pretty high soul level. Well, it's not really high, but it's like 60-something, but once you're in the 60s and 70s, you start to really feel the requirements. They're quite high compared to how they were before. So we just need to hold on to more souls at any given time so that we may have enough to level up. I don't know if I did any leveling up off-camera. I think I did. I think I might have leveled up maybe three times off-camera or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But I have a feeling that I did. It wasn't anything significant. It's not like I've gone and leveled up ten times or something and didn't tell you until now. But um, there was some kind of leveling up going on. Now, I have already been through here, haven't I? Because I accessed the DLC. And I think I did kill the boars. Yeah. I had somewhat forgotten that. If I ever seem to forget things that didn't happen all that long ago, it's because I have been playing Dark Souls in my own time, and it causes confusion in my mind. Like, my memories start to overlap. Like, what did I do in this build? What did I do in my own time in my own builds? You know, just since I started this particular build, I've done two playthroughs, basically, of Dark Souls in my own time in the one build. So, and that was on the PC version, so, yeah, that's what I mean by getting a little confused. I'm a little bit uh, peckish at the moment, after I record this, and I suppose I will do about a two hour long recording, I will be going and getting food for myself, because I'm very hungry. Fortunately, we are one-shotting for the backstab there. I'm just going to mash you to death. Uh, was that five strikes? I think it was. Again, if you don't have any counter-attack damage working in your favor, then it will take longer, but I have a feeling that that would have been counter-attack damage there, so I don't know. I guess even with that, these guys are quite strong. Just making sure that no one's... Here we go, I can get you both. Now that was counter-attack damage, clearly. Unless he has... No, he wouldn't have less defense or something like that. That wouldn't make sense. He would have less health, yes. Have to be very careful here. Because this guy... is dealing a lot more damage than your standard... Crystal... Undead, or whatever these guys are called, officially. I do not know what they're called officially, but they're crystal guys. At least, um... Informally. 
Okay. With these guys, I suppose I should be aiming for critical damage at this point, because it just, it speeds up the process, because I don't need to swing my sword like five times to kill them. Wow. The best weapon in the game is the Boulder Sign Sword. I, I enjoy it, but I certainly wouldn't call it the best weapon in the game. It was definitely something I was going to make. I realized that I wouldn't be having maximum fun in a dexterity build unless I made the Boulder Sign Sword. Yeah, those guys have very little health. Yeah, see, I am dealing more damage to those guys. There must be some sort of defense value that I haven't been taking into account. So do these guys have less physical defense? Whatever. Because, yeah, definitely they are taking heavier hits. They don't just have less health, they actually take more damage. Or maybe they don't have less health at all. Maybe they just purely take more damage from me. I, don't, I really don't know. But anyway, sorry, guy. I've left you behind. I would be quite willing to end your life, but oh, don't tell me. This is not the first time I've done this. I've come all this way and I don't have a ring of sacrifice. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. I'm sitting on 20,000 souls. I can't lose these. God damn it. That's extremely annoying. Of course, the solution to this is picking up the ring of sacrifice in Filing Shrine when you first come to Filing Shrine. Because then you don't have to worry about it. But I didn't do that, clearly. Hey, Jenny. <laughs> I've been playing the Switch version of Dark Souls. I had to restart my game because I screwed up my stats so badly, says John. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But it is true that in the old days, and really it should be the same in Demon Souls. I don't know if they gave you stat reallocation in the remake, I think... I think I was told that there wasn't, uh, but yeah, there's no stat reallocation. You do it right the first time, or you make new profile. That's just the way it is. Um, what am I doing? I'm going to Filing Shrine so I can pick up a Ring of Sacrifice. How stupid was that? This is effectively going to be three times that you will see me go through the Duke's archives. At the very least, I will be able to Homeward Bone back to this bonfire that I just warped from. So that'll speed up the process a little bit, but it's still pretty annoying. Well, John Ross, you could look at it as wasted time. But in my opinion, there is no wasted time when you've played Dark Souls, because it's a game that very much rewards trial and error. You've already learned... Um, you've already been through the game once, I'm assuming once. And through that experience, you have learnt how to play it better next time. And that's worthwhile. That's not wasted time. 25 hours isn't so bad. I don't know, I'd say I'd be pretty annoyed if 25 hours didn't result in at least one completed character in New Game. But yeah, in his case, he's having to try again or start over. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's wasted time, necessarily. You've learned something in that time, and as well as that, starting the game over fresh is sort of normal. That's the Souls experience. That's the replayability. Hmm. Yes, I can certainly relate to losing a monster on a save. That's uh, a whole lot worse. It's not something that I would wish on any person. Alright. Here we go again. I'm just going to run past these guys because I've already killed them once. I don't need to do it again. I have demonstrated the process. It's not all that complicated. I do have to be careful so as not to be overrun. But uh, I think we'll be alright. Don't particularly need to kill you. Oh, don't fucking tell me. It's one of those days. It's one of those days. I'm in trouble now. Because that uh, is see now I would have remembered to do that had I remembered to do that. I will tell you that I made the same mistake in one of the builds that I was doing in my own time very recently. I reached this point in the game 
and I had forgotten to pick up a Ring of Sacrifice. And before I homeward boned out of that position, I sent the elevator down. But I forgot to do it this time. Stupid as it is. I could technically access it from this side, so I might do that. It might be safer. What does Dexterity do, and should I level it up? Um, dexterity does different things depending on the game. For instance, in Demon Souls, increasing Dexterity increases a stat called Safer Landing, which basically allows you to reduce the damage taken provided you haven't fallen beyond the... Uh, I don't really know how to describe it other than to say you can fall too far and then you're going to die anyway, like automatic death. That does exist. Um, in this game, dexterity is purely something that could be scaled off of. So, a weapon that has a rating of A, B, C, D in dexterity will obviously scale based on that dexterity stat. Commonly, you will have dexterity weapons be faster moving weapons, so if you're a person who likes a light build with a fast attacking weapon, as well as that, dexterity weapons are usually quite light, um, dexterity is going to be appropriate for you. Generally speaking, there are always um, exceptions to these rules, but usually dexterity is light and fast in terms of weapons, and strength is heavy and slow. But, uh, again, there are certain exceptions to that. Oh, come on. Stop with this crap. I know you guys might think that I'm being ridiculous or stupid or whatever, but... Blame the bloody Xbox D-pad, seriously. So it's not too hard to avoid being cursed here. You just have to try to not be dumb. Just trying to get hit by the actual beam of light that he shoots out. I'll just avoid this. There you go. If you allow yourself to get hit by the crystals too much, you will risk being cursed. And um, that's a problem. If you, had, if you had a rare ring of sacrifice, you wouldn't have to worry about that, but I just had a regular ring of sacrifice. And that, sort of for the benefit of any person who doesn't know, is going to allow me to retain all my humanity and souls. Basically, it doesn't count as a death. And that is a part in the game, or a part of the game, where you are required to die in order to continue. So, that is really the way it is. You can't just somehow get it. Well, you can technically get around it. There is a, a glitch where you jump onto the elevator that I had forgotten to send back down. You can do a jump where... Come on. Usually these guys run. He's being a fucking dick right now. It's very nice that I've got only two attacks required to kill you. Two-handed RT. Very nice. I'm going to have some creepy Cthulhu-looking things coming after me, as you can see. And um, I'm just going to let them come. I don't really have ranged capabilities here. I'm doing a dexterity build, so I really should, you know, get a bow or something. I just never find the... I never feel like I need a bow. That's why I almost never think to do it. I mean, you'd think with the dexterity build I'd be making a bow, but... I just haven't been doing that. Could go and get the black bow of Faris. That's usually the... ideal bow. Can't remember where to get it, though. I think it's from... one of the spirits in the Darkroot Forest, isn't it? I think that's where you get it. Sort of off to the right side. So I might, yeah, I might go and get that. And if it's not from the spirit, it's on the ground as a pickup. One of the two. Just going one-handed for the most part with this sword. Do have shield capabilities here. It's a fully upgraded shield, in fact. My stability, by the way, for it is on 66, which is pretty good. 66 stability is quite high for a medium shield. And I've reached that level thanks to... Whoops, that was supposed to be a running attack.
See, well, shielding is not going to help me in that situation, no. But yeah, you can see that these guys are basically a reimagining of the um, Mind Flayers from Demon Souls. Not just in the fact that they have, you know, this tentacled appearance, but also the fact that they do stick this needle-like thing inside you and suck out your essence or something like that. So it seems like I can one-shot them with the RT, which is very clean. Very nice. Now these two over here usually just mind their own business, and they have a guaranteed drop for a miracle each. And they have more health than the rest. So that one's Boundful Sunlight, and this one is Soothing Sunlight. Both of which are heal miracles, I believe. I think one is a heal over time and the other one is an instant heal, possibly. I don't quite remember because I don't really use healing miracles at all. I just don't feel a need. Will I be streaming Elden Ring when it releases? I don't know, it sort of depends on my setup, honestly. This is not a good position to be in. That is really dumb. <laughs> what happens when you're too busy reading the chat to properly consider what you're walking into in that moment. That's alright. I won't have to kill those Cthulhu's again because basically that music is not going to be playing as I come through here the next time. So that means the creepy Cthulhu creatures will not be running after me or anything. These guys are still going to try to run away though. So I'm going to kill them. Yeah, two-handing this weapon gives you some pretty impressive range when you thrust it. I mean, look at that. If you actually look at the range of that, it's like a spear. It's pretty good. I like that a lot. Haven't really been using spears lately either. I'll probably have to do a spear build or something like that because I wouldn't use a spear in a dexterity build. There are so many dexterity weapons that I enjoy more than spears that I just don't end up using them, but... That will probably require the use of a spear, or require the creation of a spear build. Which would be, I don't know, very similar to a standard dexterity build, but I would only use spears, that's the idea. Which would be fun. So when the music's not playing, they all just hang around in here. And uh, that makes life a lot easier for me. So what I might do is play it real aggressive. Like so. You motherfucker, you jumpy bastard. Alright, get over here, quickly. Bastard. It's very frustrating. One of those days, man. One of those days. Alrighty, so you're dead. Of course, what I was looking for there was the invulnerability period of the Reposter, and I was just failing my timing, so it is what it is. Open the chest. This is going to be the key to the door that will allow us to leave this place. If you don't pick up that key from that chest, you can't leave here. If you like this place, then that's great, but you won't be able to <laughs> progress through the game, so that's problematic. Uh, the snake men were, I suppose they were from the uh, land of giants in Demon Souls, yeah. Not quite the same design, but, yeah. There were indeed snake men creatures that were cut from Demon Souls. Anyway. We will be returning here in the future once we have the key to rescue Big Hat Logan. Although Big Hat Logan's not there, so yeah. <laughs> We're not going to be rescuing Big Big Hat Logan, but we will in fact be going into the cell area, or at least behind that that gate. Oh no. Gate is not the term. Let's just say cell. Uh, so that we may pick up a firekeeper soul that's in there. I have no reason to 
engage in Big Hat Logan's storyline because I'm not going to get any use out of his magic. Oh, come on, you little bastard. Don't have time for that. Now, these arrows really hurt, so don't get hit by them. Much like how these guys deal a lot of damage given their size, these arrows just deal unreasonable damage. I don't know what the logic behind that is. I just don't understand it. It makes sense with the crystal weapons for them to deal a lot of damage, but in terms of those arrows, I feel like they do deal, they deal too much damage for what they are. Bloody hell, I can't talk. It's funny how the colours are really washed out here. Don't know why. It's just in that place specifically, and then the colours come back to normal. Hello. I think I can kill him. Yeah, he's out of here. Goodbye. Thank you for your service, or whatever. Did I kill Patches in this playthrough? I haven't even seen him yet. He's in the Tomb of the Giants. Oh no, um, I did see him, I think. Was it in this recording? It was in this um, playthrough where I saw him in the catacombs. And he, um, he was left alive, yes. I saw him when I was picking up my Great Scythe. He tried to turn the bloody bridge on me. Oh, fuck off, will you? You all need to take it easy. It would be very frustrating to be killed here. I'm going to focus on lighting the bonfire. This guy's coming after me. I could have rested at that bonfire, you know. It would have let me. Now it's a bit too late. Stamina management. You do your jump. Well, it was the first one for this build, Jenny. Because I picked up the great side at the start of the game. Just did a run into the catacombs and picked it up there. Okay, so... Um, I'll cut it out. Obviously, that arrow was shot sometime or sometime before I rested at the bonfire, so it ended up hitting, hitting me later on. Okay. I will level up with these souls, but I will consume souls on hand before doing so. Souls in my inventory, one could say. Alright. I would say that he will definitely return in Elden Ring. I'd be really shocked if he didn't. I didn't fully answer the question as to whether or not I'll stream Elden Ring. Um, the answer will depend on my streaming setup at the time. Because I'll be playing Elden Ring on PC. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to stream Elden Ring and play it on the same PC. It wouldn't be possible. So, I would need to get a different streaming PC and all that business and on top of that I don't if it's a game that I really really appreciate I don't like streaming it for my first experience because as I've said a few times before the process of streaming takes a lot of my attention like because the way in which I do this is there's a level of presentation to it and if it's a game that I haven't experienced before I feel like I'm taking away from my first experience of it by allocating a lot of my attention to recording a live stream. So, for a game like Elden Ring, don't expect to see a showcasing of my first experience with it, because I would find that to be a distraction from my enjoyment. Um, I'd still enjoy it, but it just wouldn't feel quite as um, quite as fun. I'm not the sort of person who can get enjoyment out of making a video of their first experience doing something, unless it's not that big of a deal. Like if it's Sonic 06, for example, I don't need to have my first experience playing that game be uh, a personal experience. That's uh, That would be an example of a different sort of game compared to Elden Ring. Alrighty. Um, leveling up with these souls for the reason that I don't want to be walking around with them. Let's take you to 40, because that would be nice and clean, sitting on 380, or well, 381 more specifically, for right-hand weapon damage. And that is very nice to see. That's a good increase. The soft cap, particularly with an A scaling with dexterity, will be 40. 
Um, I think you could probably get a, get decent increases with an S scaling up to 45, but maybe the soft cap is 40 across the board for dexterity. I don't know, but I do believe that depends on the uh, rating we're talking about. So. This part of the Duke's archives is a little bit confusing, first time you come through, I will admit. It confused the fuck out of me when I was first coming through here. It's all just part of the process now, but first time? God, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with myself. Basically, we need to go back up here, and then, yeah, yeah. And then we go across. There is a mechanical bridge that can be turned. I guess stairway, one could say. That would be an appropriate way to refer to it. And then we spin it around. We've got a friend joining us. Two friends. Hello. How are we, how are we going? Uh, this is an interesting part of the game actually where if you so choose you can gain access to a really interesting uh, crossbow by intentionally falling off this area. Well I eventually ran out of stamina didn't I? They put me in the fucking corner. You absolute dicks. Now the problem with this situation is that I don't know how I'm going to access my bloodstain. I don't know how to turn that back around. We're going to find out, but I don't know how to actually access that side. Because I've just turned that thing and now I need to somehow be able to access that side. Despite the fact that it's been turned. We'll figure this out, but I feel like this is not the first time I've been confused in that way. I think there is a solution, but in other words, the same situation has probably happened in the past, and I had similar concerns, but I think I worked it out. He's hoping we'll be fine. Okay. Fortunately, I had turned around fast enough to shield the bloody arrow. I don't like all the arrows flying around, they deal way too much damage for what they are, and it just adds a, a level of difficulty to the process. Alright, so we're going to inspect the situation over here. Cannot fucking access that. Yeah, I don't enjoy killing NPCs personally, oh god. Oh, that's very nice of them. That's very nice of them for putting the blood stain just there. Okay, um, as far as turning that, I have got no idea. I don't know what my options are right now. Can I go higher than this? We'll work it out. But this is not an ideal scenario, I must confess. Might be able to... Here we go, this, this might work. Yeah, this will be fine. Unfortunately, this guy's really strong if he hits me. I can't believe he didn't kill me. I was expecting him to kill me because he had actually empowered himself. Oh, can you stop that? Okay, well, in the end, it wasn't necessary for me to even turn those stairs, so... I'll be quite fine doing this. Alright. So if we go down here... I'm just glad I got my bloodstain back. It's not so much the souls, it's the humanity that I didn't want to lose. Alright. So when we come over to this sign, we are able to move a huge bookshelf. Or bookcase, whatever you want to call it. And that serves as a shortcut, basically. We don't have to do that again to access that area. I am tempted to go and get the Black Bow of Faris right now, because otherwise I might forget, so... And then I'll do that before we venture forward in the Duke's Archives. We'll actually be going down into that garden that I was trying to show you there. Alright. I really am used to faster loading screens than this, I must confess. How I'll probably do it is I won't rest at any of these bonfires and I'll just homeward bone back to 
the one that I rested at in, in the Duke's archives. That is a warpable bonfire. So it's not the end of the world if I do rest at another bonfire, but I feel like it'll be a faster process if I just homeward burn. From where I pick up the Black Bow of Faris. I haven't picked up the Black Bow of Faris in quite some time. So my memories of where it is are kind of vague, but I'm pretty sure that I'm correct. I, it would have to be well and truly a serious false memory if I can't find where it is, because I think I know exactly where it is. Although I do admit that I don't know if it's dropped from one of those ghostly NPCs or it's a pickup on the ground. It's one of the two, but I know where it is roughly. Oops, I am too busy reading the chat to put myself in the appropriate position to hit this enemy without targeting it. Why am I trying to go for a backstab on a tree person? That's not something that works. Hey, Axio. Yes, I'm killing vegans. Okay. So I might have to deal with... these enemies here. We'll see if I do end up having to deal with them. I'll try hugging this side. Okay, good. Just saves me time, honestly. So the black bow should be around here somewhere. I think, yeah, it's this guy, isn't it? He drops it. Not like this guy, not the tree person, but there's like a... There is actually an NPC around here that... Uh, I call them NPCs because they're actual people. But... Uh, yeah, I think there's a... I think Faris is here with his black bow and then we kill him and then take it. This guy just wants a hug, honestly. I regret that I cannot oblige him. Getting good drops for... or getting good drops from them. I'll try to find Faris here. Is it you? No, it's not. It's not you. You're not Faris, you're someone else. Man with sword. What the hell was that? My controller, again, just did its own fucking thing. It's a problem with the Xbox 360, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's this incredible delay on the controller for certain inputs. Okay, whatever, man. The guy sniping me, that's Faris. So, we'll go and deal with him. Man with sword is dead. And Faris is next. I think I know where you are, roughly. You've shot a, an arrow into a tree there. There's Faris, up there. He's somewhat hidden. Yeah, good on you. Oh, it's a female. I'd forgotten that, to be honest. What is that? It's a broadsword or something. You can back off the edge if you want. Actually, don't, because then it'll be harder to pick up your stuff. And there's the Black Bow of Faris. And there is a hat included. How do I feel about the hat? <laughs> I don't really like that hat at all. I think I will go back to the porcelain mask. I th I've just got a feeling that I would uh, prefer to do that. So, I'm probably going to need to grind some chunks, but uh, it looks like a fedora. Similar, yes. In fact, I'd say the fedora has its origins in that design. But, um, yeah, the black bow will upgrade through standard Titanite from memory. Actually, no, it's not something that I would put in the left hand, I'll put it in the right hand. And uh, I will need to purchase some arrows, but... You know... Yeah, I'll deal with upgrading it later. I've picked it up, that's what's important. Homeward burning takes me back to, to the Duke's archives, so I will stay in the Duke's archives. What I might do is... Well, is it... Yes, it is worth at least kindling this bonfire once. In other words, taking it to intensity 2. So, I will do that. I probably... Yeah, I'll just use the humanity that's already in my counter. Conduct reverse hollowing. Oh, God. 
Kindle the flame. And I'm probably not going to get the Firekeeper Soul that I was talking about before taking on Seath the Scaleless. Seath is a very easy fight. He's one of the easier bosses in the game. Unless you don't know how to fight him. But if you do know how to fight him, he's a very simple boss to kill. Uh, this is the Channeler armor set. I guess I'll pick it up. I don't find myself using this set all too often. All that often. All too often is fine, also. Uh, this is the key. On excuse, excuse me. This is the key. Excuse me. So that key opens the cell that I was talking about. That is a mimic. What's in it again? Well, what's the mimic holding? It's something that I don't need, but I'll kill him anyway. Give me the thing that you hold. It is an enchanted falchion. Yeah, don't need it. Yeah, Anolondo is no fun for a beginner. No fun at all. But patience will eventually reward you with victory. Prism stones, which are not really necessary for the upcoming area, but they can help, I suppose. Of course, prism stones are the Dark Souls equivalent to Orgite of Guidance. Orgite of Guidance, of course, being the Demon Souls version. But yeah, I didn't get the Black Bow of Pharos because I felt that I needed it for this part of the game. But I did have it in mind and thought that I'd pick it up while I was thinking of it. I generally don't bother killing these guys. I guess I could kill you, but... Oh, come here. <laughs> That's just pathetic. I think I attacked him four times and missed three. Oh, come on. This is why I don't bother. Just leave me alone. I don't have time for you. Hi. Don't want to roll too far now, do we? You can see that their range increases exponentially when they have that big crystal arm that swings at you. Alright, so there are two paths that you can take here. You can either follow the crystal that way, like the big crystal floor, or you could go along an invisible pathway and reach one I believe to be... Actually, I don't remember what it is. Humanity. Well, there's humanity for you. And, uh, you, you know, you may as well get some humanity out of it, so... Take the left path, I guess. Uh, there are some non-aggressive moonlight butterflies in this location. You can kill them if you want. I don't, personally. I generally don't bother with that. Because they're kind of nice. This guy I usually do take the time to kill, but he's annoying. What you need to realize about this spot is that um, if you go towards the right from where I'm facing right now, you'll slide off. Or at the very least, there's a considerable risk of sliding off. And it's very annoying. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. Don't do that. Couldn't have been much closer than that, Doom Link. Couldn't have been much closer than that. I mean, that's cause for confusion as far as how I survived that, but... Yeah. I was very close to rolling off, but did not. So here's another invisible, invisible pathway. Basically what you do is you try to find in the distance, and it's hard to see sometimes, but there is actually, like, a part of the distant... Um, I don't want to call it a walkway because that implies that it's crafted in some way. It's not. It's just the area. But there's a part that juts out ahead. But the colours are so similar that unless you know what you're looking at, you've, you can't see anything. Um, my recommendation is to run straight ahead. But if you can actually see the part that juts out, then just aim for that. This is the part that juts out. And... 
if you know what you're looking for, you can see it in the distance, but it's, yeah, it's a bit confusing if you've never been here before. I will take the time to kill these clams manually. One at a time, and with care. I will actually... You've got to be joking. I've been doing this without the second ring slot the whole fucking time. That's uh, quite ridiculous. Try to move to the side there. And I will two-hand because these guys are pretty strong. Uh, they're not secret paths, they're just, they're invisible paths. And the path that I just traversed is required to get to this point. You can't continue through the Duke's archives unless you pass across the invisible pathway. And it's, well, traverse the invisible pathway. It's just one of those things where usually if you're playing online, which I'm not right now because I don't have Xbox Gold, as if I would, um... Yeah, you would have other people leaving messages to show you that it's a traversable pathway. If you're playing the remastered on the Switch version, you will probably have people doing that for you. Um, in my case, I'm not playing online, so I just had to do it based on uh, visualizing the way forward. Or confirming the way forward visually. This is so fucking annoying. And sometimes I hate the way that they attack. Great. How many of you do I have to fight at once? It's not good to fight multiple <laughs> clams at once. They're very aggressive. You don't have to kill them. I mean, you can just go straight into the boss room and sometimes you'll have one that manages to reach the boss area. It's not a big deal, but... At the very least, I am flinching them with each attack that I deal. So you can see they have that really fast thrusting attack of their own. You motherfucker. Did you see that? He was walking towards me and then he decided to stop walking towards me. I do realise that I don't know. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Their attacks are very carefully crafted to piss me off as much as possible. But yes, I do realise that I'm running low on Estus flasks for the upcoming boss, but again, the upcoming boss is very difficult, so I should be fine. Um, just making sure that no one has dropped anything. Seems like no one has. Okay. Wolf ring, thank you. The boss room is this, uh, this cavern in here. Yeah, there is, uh, there is one message. If you noticed when I was walking that invisible pathway, there was one message there. So it's only to show that there is an invisible pathway if you were to drop down, but it doesn't show you the full um, journey. It doesn't show you the full pathway that you must trace. Okay, so very, very important. You must destroy this crystal, otherwise Seath cannot be harmed in any way. My recommendation for fighting Seath is to just attack the ends of his tentacles here. Because with that, you'll be able to much more easily get out of the way of anything that is directed at you in terms of attacks anything that is designed to harm. So, see, I'm outside of his range there. That's not a problem at all. And also, sometimes he swings his tentacles at you. And if you're in this position, you only need to roll once and you're out of range. So, it's not a problem at all. I am dealing a lot of damage too, which is nice, but... As you can see, he really isn't able to do much to me. He's trying his best, but... Oh, I missed. There you go. And that's Seath that scales. If you have a crap... That's a great shot. Thank you for that. Um, what the fuck. 
<laughs> I uh, was trying to demonstrate the death scene, and then that happened, which was not what I was looking to to have happen. Okay, so we are now sitting on ninety five thousand souls, which is nice. Sounds good, Arixia. Okay. So... What should I level up? I guess Endurance is looking... to be given some attention. But... I don't know if that's a priority right now. Should I take Dexterity further? Let's look at... Yeah, you can see there is a bit of a soft cap there. From 41 into 42, there is no increase for my right hand weapon damage so I can leave it at 40 for now I'm I would take dexterity to 50 or 60 usually I don't take it beyond 60 but um, I think it would be I think my points would be better served being allocated to you know endurance and vitality I would say so I think I will do that I'll take endurance to 30 and then I don't know I'll work on vitality after that vitality can definitely go much higher than this we're only at 25 so yeah, so level 70, which is pretty respectable. And... Yeah. We've got four Twinkling Titanite, which is nice, I suppose. Should I take some time to... Well, I won't spend much time on it. But I will... Do a little bit of clam farming. To get some Twinkling Titanite to upgrade our armor pieces here. I'm going to focus on one armor piece at a time now, instead of... You know, trying to upgrade each piece once and then moving on to the next one. In other words, I'm going to try to fully upgrade one piece and then move on to the next one after that. Now the range of the two-handed version, well, two-handing with this weapon and doing the strong attack is actually very good. I mean, I'm very much enjoying the range. Look at that, that's beautiful. Look at that. Yummo. There's a purging stone. Oh, come on. I really don't want purging stones. I'm happy to receive purging stones alongside Twinkling Titanite. But I really don't want only purging stones. That's not what I'm doing this for. Maybe the game's trying to say something. We saw that you got cursed earlier on, so we're going to give you a bunch of purging stones in case it happens again. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. And there's one more clam over here, and that's basically the process. It's much easier than the Ash Lake farming technique, because that's a very long beach that you have to walk across, and there are only three clams there. Whereas this is a... I don't remember. I should have counted. I think there's about six clams here. Well, I can count them right now. One, two, three. And, oh no, I thought I saw one there. Yeah, three. Oh, it's five, I think. Six. Yeah, it is six. So that's six clams all in the same area and very close to the bonfire. So that is much more efficient versus the Ash Lake area. Okay. So I think we got two Twinkling Titanite out of that. I don't know. I think we, oh, yeah, it was, yeah. We started with four. Okay. I'll probably do two more rounds of this, and then I'll save it for an off-camera grinding session. And by it, I mean the upgrading of my armor set, because I don't find... I mean, you've noticed, I'm not taking so much damage that I really need to upgrade my armor. I think I'll be alright. And I'm also getting some souls out of this too, which is a positive. I'm getting so many purging stones, I usually don't get this many. They're not an uncommon drop, but... To get so many purging stones instead of Twinkling Titanite is a bit frustrating, honestly. Yeah, very much enjoying the Boulder Sign Sword right now. It is one of my favourite dexterity weapons. I also love the fact that it's a regular sword, even though it looks like a, a thrusting sword. I mean, the... Did I pick up the S-Stock so I can actually compare? If I didn't, then it's okay. Yeah, I did. So look at this. The S-Stock visually 
In terms of the width of the blade itself, and also the length, to be honest, is almost the same weapon. It's This is slightly longer, just slightly longer than the boulder side sword. But this is a thrusting weapon. So basically what I'm saying is the boulder side sword is basically a standard swinging sword with the same design. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this is a thinner sword. Like the blade itself is thinner, which is, or narrower I should say, which I think is really cool. I'm surprised that they don't have bad durability to reflect that. The durability is sitting at 120, which is better than some of the katana weapons, I think. I think the washing pole is like 30 durability or something crazy like that. If it's not 30, then it's 60, but yeah, I don't know. Couldn't say. Because my memories... Do not uh, serve me well at this time. I will have to go and purchase some more homeward bones, so what I might do, that's a good idea. So I'll do this one more time, and then I will purchase some homeward bones. I do apologise for the background noise, if I could do something about it, I would, but I can't, so I will not do anything about it. That is how that works. You know, I, it would have been good to upgrade my dexterity a little bit, because I would then be able to kill these guys in two thrusts, but sadly... I did not level up my dexterity. At least not beyond 40. There's a very delayed roll there. You can see that after two thrusts I just have this little sliver of health left. Which would probably be enough to... Well, their health would probably be enough to uh, have fully depleted if I were at, say... 383 also right hand weapon damage. I'm currently at 381. Beautiful range. I love this weapon. No regrets. How many purging stones do I fucking need? This is insanity. How many do I have? 11 purging stones. Hello. I really don't need them. I really don't need them. That's an eating attack, by the way. You don't want to get hit by that. If you want to get eaten by a clam, then that's your thing, but it's not my thing. Alright. Homeward Burning 2, that bonfire. This is a whole lot faster in the PC version, of course, but, you know, that loading screen isn't too long, so I can live with that. I think I will start off with purchasing Homer Bones, and then I'll go to the Undead Parish. I, come to think of it, will have to limit the number of Homer Bones I purchase, because I've only just got enough souls right now to purchase the large... Titanite that I need to fully upgrade the Black Bow of Faris. This is assuming that the Black Bow of Faris upgrades with standard Titanite, which I believe it does. Huh. Well, that's alright, because in the end... No, it's okay, because I'll need to kill some Dark Wraiths anyway for chunks of Titanite, so that means I'll be getting more souls anyway. And I won't be doing that off-camera, I don't think, because I want to use the Black Bow of Faris as soon as possible. I don't know why I'm killing you guys, I really don't think it's worthwhile, but here I am. Oh, don't do that. This is not a first playthrough. <laughs> not even remotely a first playthrough. How needlessly cruel would it be to wear Artorius's armor during the Sith fight? Or Sith, rather, not Sith. He's not a Sith yet. Maybe in the future. When he has proven himself more. Um, it would be quite cruel. I personally, on a matter of principle, never rescue Sith in the DLC for the reason that I don't want to... I don't want him to recognize me. I, I can't do that shit. I, I think that's awful and I don't want that. So, 
yeah. Okay, so... We will do a little bit of Dark Wraith killing. I apologise that we're already doing that again. Even though I said that I was going to do most of that off camera, and I did. But I forgot that I wanted to make the Black Bow Forest, so here I am. I am going to need to get some more chunks of... Titanite. Titanite chunks, however you want to say that. And... In doing so, given my current desideratum, I am going to need to kill some Dark Wraiths, so... There you go. I've got no idea what you're saying, Saltfest. I cannot make sense of what you've just said. <laughs> to read it verbatim, what would you do if when you okay, so he said yes, would go? Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty... It's a pretty difficult one to translate. Could just as easily be in a different language. Yeah, and all is no fun. But I get through it. Relatively painlessly these days. And have done for quite some time, fortunately. It's just one of those things where you, when you've done it enough times it stops being a challenge because you know what to do. There are some places that are difficult even if you know what to do, but Anolondo is one of those places where if you understand the process, it's pretty simple. For example, the Four Kings boss fight with certain builds is really terrible as you go up the new game levels. Like, it's just an awful boss. Awful, awful, awful. New game plus two Four Kings with a heavy build is just... Ugh. No, no, no. Not fun at all. But... Uh... It's just because they spawn on a timer. If you don't kill them fast enough, several will spawn. And it's just what it is. You can't really get around it. And so the Four Kings becomes difficult, whether you know how to kill them well or not. It's just... Uh, it's one of those things. Please, no. I'm hoping for chunks. Because I would, I don't want to spend much time doing this, you understand. I've already done a lot of this on camera in this series, up until this point. I'd like to spare you all the, the monotony. I will go further down these stairs to avoid the ghosts. I'll fuck off with your crap! The only reason why that happened, and what's incredibly frustrating, is that I do have a chunk sitting there. Um... The only reason why that happened is because I don't have the poise. He stunlocked me. Of course, I have to unequip my Wolfering in order to get more, well, item discovery, I guess one could say. But what I was wanting to say in actual fact was so that I could have better drop rates for chunks. But yeah, the, the situation there was crap. And it frustrates me when dumb shit like that happens, because, you know, that slows down the process. I have to go all the way back there again, and I missed a chunk, so that is definitely time wasted. Yeah, low poise, like, eight poise is just bad news. I would recommend uh, Agent of Chaos trying to get the wolf ring. I find that to be basically a necessity, unless you're running Darkwood Green Ring, or you're just pretty good with rolls. But, you know, the reason why I find high poise to be important is precisely for scenarios such as that. I think I've still got... Yeah, see, I'm even on 20 poise, I can get stunlocked like that. So, yeah, unfortunately, the wolf ring is very important. Yeah, this is a bit of a creepy location, I, I do agree. It's supposed to be a... Um, an abandoned, ruined, haunted location. So, yeah. It is what it is. I'll take it. Uh, a dark hand as well. I really do think that item discovery is not just placebo, 
I think it's in fact the opposite to what you might think. I think you have better chances of getting stuff at lower item discovery. I think it's bugged, I really do. My experience with item discovery is just... It tells me that there's something wrong. I tend to get better luck at less than the highest possible item discovery. Alright, trying to get away from those ghosts. They do leash at the top of the stairs, so you don't really have to worry about them. Once you have... ...gotten to the bottom of the stairs. Good day. Have to be quick with this one because the ghosts do come through the wall on the right side. This one always drops something. And this is always the most dangerous spot. Fuck off. No. It's the most dangerous spot to try and pick something up because of these bloody ghosts. And I don't have the time to use transient curses to fight them. I mean, why would I do that every time? I wouldn't, so I won't. Hello. Could have gone for a backstab there, but your back was against the wall, so I thought better of it. One shot with the backstab. No item. We're sitting on two chunks right now. Great. What I will do with this guy is just kill him when he comes down. Not liking my chances right now. Well, I'm not liking the results of my luck. Or lack thereof. Fucking hell. But yeah, I'm doing this because I want to use the Black Bow of Fires before I finish the game. I've only got two full areas to go through before the game's over. And I... Well, I guess I do still have parts of the DLC, but... Yeah. What's going on with you, man? See, I timed it for when he was going to drop his shield, but it wasn't quite right. That got me killed in the previous recording, I think. That same scenario. This is not good. Whatever. I'll just pray that I don't have to spend too much time doing this. I'm concerned for your entertainment. I really am. Because I do realise that I've spent a lot of time doing this already, so... I mean, it doesn't bother me. Like, I can do this forever. I've spent a lot of time in my life killing these Dark Wraiths, but... Yeah, as far as giving you something new to look at, it doesn't really achieve that. Well, thank you, John. Well, that's good enough for me. As long, as long as someone finds this entertaining, I'm happy. But it, it does depend. Sometimes you can get a lot of chunks in a short space of time, and then other times you just get a dry spell, and it's... I have to say I'm hoping that I'm not going to be getting a dry spell now, when I want to get this over and done with especially quickly. But having said that, I'm probably now going to get a dry spell because it's always when you don't want it that it happens. When you have the time to allocate, you get everything that you need in no time at all. And then when you don't want to allocate the time, you just get nothing. So... It's kind of annoying, but uh, that's the way it is. I don't know why that doesn't just stay gone. Like once you 
open the invisible pathway. Why it doesn't just stay visible. I don't understand it. Anyway, like, how does it become solid again, visually? Is it a living being that respawns? <laughs> Fortunately, it wasn't. He wasn't so high above me on the stairs that it prevented the reposter. As I've said many times before, reposters are a bit messy on the stairs. Let's see if once again I do get a drop from the one up here. Again, this is the most dangerous one. I guess what I'll do is I'll pull him away. Pull him, pull him away from the ghosts. Oh, fuck. This is not good. Pull him away from the ghosts and then give him an opportunity to come closer. Great. Fuck right off. You guys need to fuck right off. I just... I'm not doing that. Or will I? No, I won't. I'll live without that Dark Wraith for now. Come on. Mm. Motherfucker. I mean, it's nice of you to follow me, but... That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> anyway. Come on. Don't land on me. You mother of a fuck. Thankfully, he didn't fully stunlock me there. God. Because he landed on me, I wasn't able to take that opportunity to hit him. I was too busy being flinched. Just awful. Getting him right in the tailbone. Four chunks. Shall we get a 100% drop rate from these ones, please? Please? Nope. It's funny that I actually thought that I would get my level drained. It's only humanity, fortunately. Damn it, it's just out of range. Come on, guys. Well, if I complain every time I don't get a chunk, this is going to be a much more painful experience, I think. It's just I... Don't really have much else to discuss or to touch on. So, the sooner I can be done with this, the better, and I regret to say that um, it doesn't look like it's going to be done with any time soon. Hello, h absurd hero. Welcome. I'm doing reasonably well. I'm just grinding Titan Knight chunks as we speak to upgrade the Black Bow of Forest before heading into either the Tomb of the Giants or Lost Isleth. I'll likely start with Lost Isleth. Because then I can get the Sunlight Maggot and then go through Tomb of the Giants without needing to run around with that lantern thing. I don't think I've acquired the Rite of Kindling, have I? No. Okay. Well, we'll do that. We'll go to Lost Isleth and take care of that first. But, of course, before going to Lost Isleth, we have some chunks to acquire. And I'm definitely not <laughs> at a loss for... Or, I'm not lacking souls. I will indeed be able to... Purchase the large Titan Knight. God, I can't get my thoughts out today. I will be able to purchase the large Titan Knight that I require to upgrade the bow also. <laughs> I'm doing absolutely awesome, says Absurd Hero. Well, that's... Encouraging. Enjoy your absolutely awesome day, 
as much as you can. Is the Tomb of the Giants an endgame area? You can access it earlier on. Like fairly early on you can access the Tomb of the Giants because the boss that stops you from entering the Tomb of the Giants. Well, let's say the boss that got- you fucker. Did you see how I got killed there? The incredible width of the thrust of that other Dark Wraith is what killed me. I wasn't even physically touching the sword. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but that's what was going on there. I was not even touching the sword, and it still killed me. Um, yeah, Pinwheel, very easy boss, and he's the boss that guards the Tomb of the Giants. You can't go all the way through the Tomb of the Giants at the start of the game, but you can access it. And yeah, it's kind of awful. It is an in-game area. And there are items that you can use to light your way through there. Can't believe I died again. What a load of crap. What a waste of my time. Yeah, getting lost in the Tomb of the Giants is no joke. Because you can actually get lost in there. I used to run through, like, at full speed without any, um, like, without a lantern or without a sunlight maggot or anything like that. Because I just knew the way. But I couldn't do that anymore. I'd probably be able to get halfway through. And then I'd get lost. We definitely need to get those souls back because that's like 58,000 souls or whatever it was. And seven humanity. And yes, going there with the ability to warp is important too. Bad. 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 <laughs> that whole situation was not nice. And I shouldn't have subjected myself to that. That 60,000 souls that I almost lost. And that might not have looked as dangerous as I'm making it out to be, but it was dangerous. The mere process of me turning around to get away from him ran the risk of me walking straight off the edge and dying, so yeah, that was bad. Might have to level up once with these souls so that I'm not walking around with quite so many. Dick. Dick. I hate it when he does the slower attack. Hi. Get a life. Yeah, I know. I know all about it, man. These two are uh, doing a dance together. Loving the cure and the choreography. It's just lovely, guys. Doing really well. But yeah, it's that's what happens when you've got a more open world. Souls game versus Demon Souls. You access places that you really shouldn't be in. Or can access places you shouldn't be in. Here we go again with this crap. Stop doing the slower attack. I hate it. And look. Look who I get to deal with. Fuck off. I'm sick of these ghosts. I really am. You're a waste of time. Is he going to follow me? He should. Yeah, come on. Go away. I'll deal with you in the meantime. Hello. Oh, I was able to get you there. I was worried that you were too closely um, facing the wall. Let me phrase that a little better. I thought that the angle of attack was not good enough given that he was facing, or his back was facing the wall. There you go. I can't talk today. I don't know if you've noticed, but I cannot talk today. Where the fuck is the Dark Wraith that's up there? What the fuck? Was that the one that came running after me? But I watched one of them fall from up there. 
Whatever. I don't care. Missing Dark Wraith. There is a Dark Wraith that has not been accounted for, and I don't care right now. It's... I guess it's you? What's going on with you? Why are you here? Whatever. <laughs> Hi, I guess. Unless I'm being dumb, which is possible. Don't like being dumb. How unusual. Couldn't imagine that. Uh, how are we going for change? Five. Fucking hell. How long is this going to take? Yeah, whatever, dickhead. <sighs> you wouldn't, would you? Thank you. At six. I think we need nine, so... I know we need nine. I love the range of that. It's so good. Off we go again. I guess I could go and give myself more humanity. Maybe I was maybe I was wrong when I said that item discovery was bugged. Maybe my item discovery is just not high enough. Let's go and give ourselves more humanity. But I will indeed level up with some of these souls because I'm sitting on too much. I will level up just once. I will take you maybe to 41? No, don't really need to. Let's increase my vitality. Pretty happy with my stamina right now. I do have endurance to 30. I wouldn't say this much stamina is necessary, but stamina is never not useful. Especially if you're using a shield, because your shield is really only as good as your stamina amount. In many cases. I messed up my jump, apparently. Nice costume, well thank you. This is the armor set that I typically use with dexterity builds. I usually do a female character and I wear this set. There are no female-only armor sets or male-only armor sets in this game as there were in Demon Souls. I'm guessing they... In fact, I hadn't even thought about that, but I'm guessing in the Demon Souls remake... They don't have female only and male only armor sets anymore. Because that would be offensive and discriminatory. But aside from that, yeah, I, I just think that would be a bit too rough around the edges, clunky, outdated, I don't know. For a modern Demon's also, I, I'm guessing that any person can wear the binded set and the dark silver set and all that business. I would imagine that. Alright. Come on. That looked really painful because that was right in the dick. Right square in the nuts. Sadly, can't get the reposter. Unless I was going to reposter his leg or his foot. That would hurt, but maybe it wouldn't kill you. As always. As always. Some things never fucking change, do they? Oh, thank you. It's very nice of you to not eat. Whatever. You know what? Whatever. Suck a cock. Seriously. Like, who's got the time for this? I don't. I don't have the time for it. You don't. I don't. No one does. And yet here I am. It saves me from using a homeward bone, but I didn't kill all the dark wraiths here, so it's not really a full session now, is it? Fucking hell. Alright. 
or a full run. I would call the session a series of runs in this context. Alright, how many do I have? Eight. Just need one more and then we're done with this shit. Thank God for that. Definitely need to get those souls back though. If I don't get those souls back, it's going to be a sad day. A sad day for Doomwing. I have died a lot in this recording, I don't know why. One of those days. Stop failing the jump, you complete and utter goober. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, I guess, but... As far as... The grind, but, um... You know, when I specifically want to do other things besides grind, I... Really, I'm not going to enjoy the process. I'll have to purchase some arrows as well, so getting these souls back is very important. Not only do I need large Titanite, but I also need some arrows. And I don't know who I'm going to buy arrows from. Who should I buy them from? I'll work out what my options are. There's my last chunk. I won't go there, that's too risky. Too dangerous. Let's run through here. Go and get those souls and then I'll contend with them as necessary. Alright. Hello. Go away, ghosts. Oh my god. There's a few of you. You can't shield the ghosts, by the way. Unless you have transient curse in effect. Go away. Come on, guys. I tried. Can't say I didn't try. Come on. You're not shielding anything. I know you think you are. That's not actually a one-shot, is it? No, it couldn't be. Is it actually a one-shot? Mm, I don't think that went through his shield. If that's a one-shot, then I've been rather foolish forcing myself to reposter and backstab these guys. Oh god, three bots at once? That's a new one. That's definitely a new one. The most I've had at once is two. But that's three. That's basically like a chat bomb. Oh, I see. One of those dark raids must have been the one that was here. Oh, hello. No, you're just being really weird. And you're always in a different place every time I see you. I don't know what the fuck the deal with that is. Oh, God. That sudden camera change is not very nice. Do not appreciate that. I'm continuing to kill these guys because I'm already here, I may as well. May as well. Yes, the first Dark Souls does have DLC. It was the first Souls game to have DLC. But it's just one area and one DLC. Alright, so we're finally done with that shit. We're sitting on 59,997 souls. Ugh. And I will confirm how many large shards I have in my inventory. Large time night, that is to say. We have none, so we do need to purchase nine. And we will be doing that through the giant blacksmith. All of our upgrades, unfortunately, are going to have to be done through Andrea Vastora because there was this glitch where we were not able to give the giant blacksmith the very large ember. So, 
Andre has the very large ember in this playthrough. It's dumb, it's the Xbox version, I would guarantee it. It should be in the version you have, John Ross. The remastered version has the DLC preloaded. The releases are as follows. You have the original Dark Souls, then you have Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. Prepare to Die Edition was basically the DLC preloaded. And then the third version is Dark Souls Remastered, and Remastered already has the DLC. So, if they sold that separately, people would have just lost their minds, and I probably would have lost my mind as well, because that's stupid, so... Yeah. The only version that doesn't have the DLC preloaded is the original one. Which has, um... Well, I can show you the cover. Uh, hold on. So. That's the original version. That's on PS3. And these are the Prepare to Die editions. One's PC, one's Xbox. In this case. Uh, you can see this one is, well, rather, this one is looking all weird because I have a green screen in effect right now. In fact, speaking of weird, my microphone's doing weird shit. Visually. But, uh, yeah, that's... May as well show you the PC version, honestly, because at least that doesn't have green on it. So, that's the PC version, and, uh, yeah. Games for Windows Live. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is, um... This is interesting though. Comes with the game disc, an additional behind the scenes disc, and the soundtrack. And the disc for the soundtrack is pretty cool actually. Check that out. And um, yeah, there's also a tiny game manual. It's actually not too tiny. You can make notes if you want. You've got uh, open space to make notes in your game manual if you'd like to do it in your game manual, which is fine. But I wouldn't want to draw on my game manual, personally. Uh, but yeah, that's PC version. So yeah, the original Lark Souls was this, basically. It's, it doesn't have Prepare to Die Edition written anywhere, and it's, you know, a shot from behind of a, of a soldier or whatever. Of a man. An armoured man. Okay. And I don't have the remastered version to show you, because I have that on PC, which doesn't have a physical case. Well, you want the Crystal Ember, do you? Well, you can fucking have it. I hath shiny shiny, yes indeed. You wanted the Crystal Ember, but you didn't want the bloody... very large Ember. What am I doing with myself? I'm buying... large Dino Chards, nine of them. At a cost of 34,200 souls. <laughs> Can't speak. I'm a boon to save time. Okay. But yeah, um, regarding the PC versions of Dark Souls, there are only two of them. You have Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition and Dark Souls Remastered. The PC version is called Prepare to Die Edition because the PC release of Dark Souls originally was the Prepare to Die Edition. So Prepare to Die Edition was a separate game release, like sort of a second edition release of Dark Souls with the DLC preloaded. And the original version did not get a PC release, but the Prepare to Die edition did. So you will never play a PC version of Dark Souls where the DLC is not pre not present. So, there you go. We are going to Andre Vestora to upgrade our bow, finally. Again, I'll need to work out who I want to 
buy arrows from. In terms of what arrows I will purchase, probably heavy arrows, I think. As far as who sells them, I think the Mail London Merchant does. As far as how many I will buy, I'll probably buy as many as I can. I'll spend all my souls on them. Okay, so... How many... Oh, stop it. If I wanted to talk to you... Well, actually. How would he know that I had accidentally talked to him? Let's go and... Oh, hold on, before we do that. No, actually, I won't take the Black Bow of Faris to the top. It's a bow. I'll keep it towards the back. All right. Taking you to plus five. I'm not going to have too many souls available to purchase arrows, to be honest. I mean, the arrows aren't going to be too expensive, but I'm planning on buying a lot, which does add up. Take you to plus 11, and then, well, do I want to use a slab on this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, so Andre Vestora, who you're seeing right here, did reappear in Dark Souls 3, you are correct. And he, in fact, allowed you to upgrade your Estus as well, and a lot of Estus. As there were two types of Estus in that game. Let's go to Filing Shrine and pay a visit to the Mail Undead Merchant. He's not going to be in Filing Shrine, but we will access him from this bonfire. That shall be done. Law-wise, I don't know how they make sense of Andrea Vastora being in Dark Souls 3. I don't actually follow the lore at all. Is he the same person, or is he like Link from The Legend of Zelda, where he has reincarnations? I don't know. Is Andre just like... of a species or race that just lives really long? Did it take place before or after the events of Dark Souls 1? I don't know. The information is out there, and I don't know it, personally. Partially because I don't personally care. Which, you know, some people don't like to hear, but I am not really interested in Dark Souls lore. Never have been. It's not to say that it's bad, but I'm focused on the gameplay experience, personally. As long as there is, there's a setting that the game takes place within, well, that's all I need, really. I, I like a setting, but I don't really care for stories in video games. Out of here, man. All right, let's see what this gentleman sells. Ni he he he, or whatever he said. Uh, large arrows, right? So that's what I had in my head, not heavy arrows. So I think large arrows will do the trick, and I guess we'll purchase 332. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Not a problem at all. I do not need to use a Homeward Bone because I do have a bonfire nearby. Let's go and equip the Black Bow. Oh god, all these Dark Hands. I will drop them. You cannot sell items in this game. It wasn't until Dark Souls 2 that you could sell things. Can you sell things in Dark Souls 3? I can't remember. Maybe it's only in Dark Souls 2, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. Those Dark Hands, I don't want them. They're interesting, but I don't want them. Because they're not really worthwhile for this build. Okay. 
So, returning to what I actually wanted to do before, which was equip the Black Bow of Faris and some arrows. Large arrows, there you go. So now we can probably move on to Lost Isolith. Is that what we want to do? I think so. Would I like to get the Rite of Kindling, though? I might do that. I think Rite of Kindling would be good to get. Unless I really don't feel the need to kindle a bonfire to plus 15 or 20. I don't know. Would it be necessary? Probably not. Let's just not bother. It's nice to have 15 or 20 SS flasks, but I don't think I really need to do that. The only time I ever really feel that I need 20 SS flasks is going up against Gwyn, because he's a bit rough. He's not an easy fight. Oh, I forgot to get that. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So, this is something that I was meaning to do but forgot, and I'm glad that I remembered now and not when I was all the way in Lost Isleth. Before making my way to Lost Isleth, what I'm going to do is return to the Duke's Archives and get that Firekeeper Soul I was talking about. I got a little bit sidetracked by the Black Bow and all that business, so let's go and pick up that Firekeeper Soul. There's another one that we can get from the Firekeeper in Anolondo, but I might not do that just yet. I could. I could turn Anolondo into Dark Anolondo and fight the Firekeeper as well as Gwendolyn. That's really an option for me. I don't see why I couldn't do that, honestly. Maybe I'll do that before going to Lost Isleth. That could be fun. I don't really have a need to kill these guys, but I may as well. Yeah, I might do that. That could be fun. Then I could get to SS Flask plus five before reaching Lost Isleth or the Tomb of the Giants. Do we want to go from here? Or? I can't quite remember. No, I don't think we want to go from here. I think we want to go higher. We're basically backtracking to that big library area. <clears throat> oh, fuck off. And there's this guy. Who we will kill fairly quickly. Not interested in you guys, although I don't want to get shot in the ass by an arrow, which is probably about to happen. <laughs> Notice how I... Well, you know what I did. Okay, you can maybe stop that. I was just trying to have some fun and you got aggressive about it. I can off. Motherfucker. Okay. So, now that we're back here, we are going to have to kill those man serpents. I mean, you don't have to, but I will. I will do that. Goodbye. I feel bad for them. They're just desperately trying to get up the ladder. And I'm preventing them from doing so. They were born into this world to climb that ladder, and I've crushed their hopes and dreams. Hi, Juvenita. We will, unfortunately, have to kill those Cthulhu bastards, because we are going to piss them off by walking in there anyway. So, what I can do is I can snipe them, seeing as though I've got the black bow now. The trick is to select the black bow without simultaneously, you know, selecting this instead. Like, you know, so this is kind of my concern, what's happening right here. The idea that it's really hard to only select one specific direction with the D-pad. Dealing pretty good damage with the bow here. Which you would hope. I think it's an S-scaling, isn't it? With dexterity? Yes. not too concerned about wasting arrows because I've got a lot of them. Which is why I bought as many as I did. 
Because if I'm going to have a bow, I don't want to be worried about running out of arrows. I find that to be really annoying, so I just buy so many that I don't have to worry about it. Snake people genocide. Well, they respawn, so I wouldn't quite call it genocide. They'll be back. And seeing as though these guys will... Oh no. Yo. The ones that drop the miracles don't seem to respawn, so... There you go. They do have a chance to drop humanity, but this is not the best way to get humanity in the game. The best way is to actually kill the living humanity creatures from the abyss. Well, it's not literally the abyss, but... Maybe it is kind of the abyss. I don't know what it is, but basically it's... Um, yeah, it's not the Abyss. You fight the father of the Abyss there, but it's not the Abyss. It's basically the last part of the DLC. Doom is Terminator. That's me. Okay. So we picked up that Firekeeper Soul. So now I think we're going to go and shoot Guinevere in the tits. But I think before we do that, we will go ahead and turn in. Oh god, that was all kinds of bad. You do get extra points for that. Is there anything in Anolondo that I would want to take care of before turning it dark? Not really, not that I can think of, so let's just do it. I don't think you have to turn Anolondo to Dark Anolondo if you're, um... Well, you don't have to turn it Dark to do either of the two things that I'm doing here. The first is killing the Firekeeper for a Firekeeper Soul, and the second is killing Gwendolyn. I don't think you have to turn it Dark Anolondo for that, but the reason why I do it is because I don't like killing a non-aggressive NPC. And when you turn... well... And yet here I am killing Guinevere, but the point is that I don't want to kill the Firekeeper without um, the Firekeeper being aggressive towards me. Can't quite... well, I'm trying to get it right in the middle. There you go. There you go. I do feel bad killing you. I have nothing against you, but unfortunately it's required to turn this place dark. So there you go. If it wasn't required, you better believe I wouldn't be killing you. I'm just going to rest here so that this is my spawn point. Oh yeah. I was shooting her in the tits alright. It was no no joke. Amazing chest ahead. <laughs> I wish Halo was on PS4. <laughs> Why would you wish Bloodborne was on Xbox? Like, why would you? I wish it was on PC. Oh, come on. I'm just going for a chain stab there. Oh, I mustn't have... Oh, I see what's going on. I see very well. I see all. I hope I haven't gone and presented my back for a backstab. Fortunately not. If Bloodborne was on PC, I might actually play it. But I'm not making any promises. But you know, what I mean to say is that I would actually consider playing it if it was on PC, whereas I would not consider playing it on PS4. Alright. So the Firekeeper is just down here. Oh, I don't have the Dark Moon Seance Ring. That's stupid. So After all this, I don't even have the Dark Moon Seance Ring. Well. But how? I think I've still got access to the bonfire, don't I? So. This woman is a threat. That's me.
But yeah. I will need the Dark Moon Seance Ring to access Gwendolyn, unless that's not needed in Dark Anna Wanda. It's possible that the way will be open without the Seance Ring in Dark Anna Wanda, but I don't think so. Either way. We're about to find out. You speak of Bloodborne as if I've never played it before. There's a reason why I'm not playing it. It's because I've played it and I don't like it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the reality. I regret to say. Okay, so can I continue? Yes, I can. You don't need the... Oh, no. Yes, I can continue. Good. So, you only need the Dark Moon Seance Ring to access Gwendolyn if um, you're doing it in non-dark Analondo. There you go. Standard Analondo. Okay. This is a warpable bonfire, by the way, in case anyone wanted to know. Let's take on the boss. Hey, Beta. I have been well. Come on. So I'll just two-hand the side sword for this, I think. Take it easy. Oh, you still got me. What's your problem? What's the deal with you? I'm not too close, am I? No, I'm not. Hmm. You think that'd be two two attacks? I think so. I think I can kill her in one more attacking round. God, that hurts. You throw your throw your daggers or your knives or whatever. Goodbye. Goodbye. Creepy tentacles. I do love her armor set, though. That much I will not deny. I might use the Great Scythe for Lost Isleth. Just for some variety. Should I? I think I should return to whatever it's called. Um, the Undead Asylum and pick up that Titanite Slab because I'm pretty sure that I haven't done that. I think I got the Rusted Iron Ring, yeah, but I didn't kill the Stray Demon, I don't think. That's an empty chest, by the way. So I'm not really interested in opening it. <laughs> Squidward. <laughs> Squidward just died. Don't be like that. How insulting to Gwendolyn. Alright. I'm going to try and return to the Undead Asylum and see if the Stray Demon has been killed. I don't think it's been killed, but I'll try. Well, I'll try to see if it's been killed. It'll be immediately obvious. I'm pretty sure that when the Stray Demon has been killed, the hole in the floor remains. We will see. Again, the reason why I don't remember is because I do get confused as to what's been done in this playthrough versus playthroughs I've done in my own time and even the previous build that I did. I know in the previous build that I did, I actually got the free Titanite Slab from that Stray Demon, but in this case, I couldn't be sure. I feel like I did, actually, because I already had a Titanite Slab when I acquired the two from the Dark Wraiths off camera. Which would suggest to me that I either picked up the one from the Stray Demon, or I got the one in the DLC. But I don't think I got the one in the DLC, because that would require that I go into Calamite's area, and I don't think I have been into Calamite's area yet. So, maybe I'm wasting my time right now. <laughs> 
The reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is because I would rather have a fully upgraded Great Scythe before going through here, but... Yeah, we'll see. Looks like... Is there a hole in the floor? I'm too busy looking ahead at the hole in the floor to actually fight these enemies, honestly. Get out of here. Is there a hole in the floor? I think there is. No? Okay, well, we're about to find out. No. He has been killed. Okay. Fine. That was a waste of time. I just didn't have a specific memory of doing that in this build. Okay, um... Should I try to go to the Black Dragon Calamite area? Can he be shot? No. I'd have to... No, it's fine. I'll just use a plus 14 fucking Great Scythe. That's fine. It's still doing plenty of damage, so... We will stick with that. Again, we have to go all the way from Violing Shrine because I've not rested at the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire. Which is kind of annoying, but... That's the way it must be. Didn't know I could do that on the elevator. Oh, you mean... Right. Yeah, that's how you return to the Undead Asylum. It's required for a free Titanite Slab and also for the Rusted Iron Ring, which is very useful in killing the Prowling Demons in the Tar Pit and also for traversing shallow water. Such as the um, first Hydra confrontation in the Dark Root Basin. So we're going through Blighttown from the Valley of Drakes, and then from Blighttown we will be reaching the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire, and that will be our spawn point for taking on Lost Islith. We are doing this without the Rite of Kindling, but that should be fine. I don't really need it. I think I will level up with these souls once I get to the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire. Ceaseless Discharge should be dead. Yes, he's definitely dead, because I have the Gold Hem set, so he's definitely being killed. Killing him is required, but you can do it earlier on. It's good for souls in the early game. <laughs> One of those enemies just killed themselves in front of me, which was nice. Very nice of you to do. Saves me the time. That is for sure. Yeah, Guinevere doesn't really have any purpose, she's just a... Well, she gives you the Lord Vessel, that's enough of a purpose, I suppose. But aside from that, she doesn't really do anything. But if you do kill her, you enter Dark Anor Londo. And Dark Anor Londo is not for everyone. If, for example, you intentionally allow yourself to be invaded in Anor Londo for PvP reasons... Um, I wouldn't recommend turning it to Dark Anor Londo, because the problem with Dark Anor Londo for confrontations is, given the fact that it's dark, you are not able to target enemies from the same distance than, that you normally would be able to. So, it's very annoying for PvP to be unable to target your assailant from a distance. I mean, it doesn't truly ruin the experience, but... It annoys me enough to ruin it for me, so. In other words, it's not really going to negatively affect your fight, it's just going to be an annoyance, that's what I'm trying to communicate. So, yeah, Dark Anor Londo isn't for everyone. It's not for me, generally, but if I'm not going to do anything in Anor Londo anyway, then yeah, I may as well just turn it dark and fight Gwendolyn without getting the Dark Moon Seance Ring. The Seance Ring is just in a particular place in the catacombs that I'd rather not physically go and get, because it's annoying. I happened to get it in my previous build, just because I was making my way through the catacombs for some reason. 
I didn't go through the entirety of the, of the catacombs. In fact, you might not ever see me go through the entirety of the catacombs because it really is an area that can be skipped almost in its entirety. In other words, you can skip through the location itself and go straight to the boss. Well, that's right. I was going to level up. Do I have anything to consume? Yes, I do. Oh, fucking it. Well, actually, that's not a problem at all. What am I reacting to? This is a warpable bonfire. So I can go back to Filing Shrine and make use of this Firekeeper Soul. I think Dark Adelondo is a little cooler, yeah, but... I enjoy the the brightness of standard Anolondo. It's you know, it's like this uh, brilliant golden light. I think it's very nice. We are currently sitting on eighty thousand souls. Estus Flask is at plus five, which is lovely. We will level up at the Filing Shrine Bonfire. We'll probably take... Yeah, I think Vitality to 28 might be what we do. I think so. It's still going up by one each time, interestingly. Hmm. Because I think it's an A-scaling with my... Oh no, come to think of it, the Boulder Sign Sword's also an A-scaling, so... Makes sense to me. I will put more points into Dexterity, but I think I'll wait until I get Vitality to 30. Probably. Okay. Make our way to the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire, which is where we just were. And I will rest at that bonfire again, so that that serves as my... Spawn point. There is an additional... Because this bonfire has a Firekeeper... We can kill this Firekeeper for a Firekeeper soul. The Firekeeper is, of course, in this case, Quailana. And I will probably kill her. I generally forget to do it, to be honest. I do usually forget to kill Quailana. I don't have anything against her, but, you know, she's a freak Firekeeper soul. So, yeah, it is good to kill her. You wouldn't want to in this case, because then I wouldn't have this Warpable Bonfire. This is a very useful Bonfire to have. But um, as far as doing it before going into New Game Plus, yeah, go for it. But I just usually forget. I'll try to remember to do it this time, but whatever. The point is that you can pretty much get to the maximum level Estus Flask before you even reach New Game Plus. I don't know if it's technically possible to do that, because that would take me to plus six in that case. But maybe I can get to plus seven. I can't remember if you can. But... Um, Not sure. Ow. <laughs> Good thing we've got a, a very effective, a particularly efficacious Estus Flask on hand at this time. Alright. Yeah, taking heavy hits now. Oh, I wasn't expecting the follow-up. But you can see I can take it. Because I've got the wolf ring. Look at that lovely range. I love the Boulder Sign Sword, but this thing's just so nice. This is my favourite dexterity weapon, yeah, but... As I said, I didn't want to use it for a while, because I did use it in the early game. Very clean weapon, this thing. Dealing 457 damage right now. Get you in the fucking head, mate. Yeah. Really? Okay. If you say so. I guess I'm so far out of his range that he's not coming after me because he doesn't know that I'm here. Not the smartest. What the fuck? You're not even flinching. I think I've lost damage over range, haven't I? Unless I was actually dealing more damage by hitting his head before. It's possible. Let's test that out. Body shot. 
Headshot. Yeah. More damage is dealt to the head. Good to know. I mean, I would have known that in the past, obviously. It's just I've since forgotten. Alright. Not a problem. Hello. I think he will come after me now, because he... I'm in his sights, you see. Oh, whoops. Goodbye. I don't have too many homeward bones, actually. I probably should have purchased some, but... Whatever, I can worry about that. I'll probably do that once I ring back to the Daughter of Chaos bonfire. There's one shot. It's another solo crown knight. There's a bonfire over there if you want to access it. It's not difficult to access. I mean, that thing there is kind of annoying. It's basically protecting the bonfire. But I don't really need it. And this boss up ahead's pretty simple. So... And after this boss, we will ring back to the Daughter of Chaos bonfire. We'll loop back, depending on how you want to say it. Now, I was actually affected by the force of the swing that he did, because it lingers. But thanks to my poise, that wasn't a problem. Okay, Mr. 5 FPS. May as well demonstrate this creature and how easy it is to kill. <laughs> Stand there and take it. Maybe he wanted to die. You don't know. Maybe he's been sitting there for so long, he's just not doing anything, so he's thinking, well, fuck, looks like I'm about to get killed. It's about time, he says. Be nice if I could aim properly, wouldn't it? Oh god, I'm being attacked from behind. You can maybe stop that now. You can maybe stop that. Between you and you, you can both fucking stop that. That's ridiculous. I've never had such a stupid death before. Not in this area, that is to say. What a load of crap. What's annoying about that is that I have to make my way all the way through there again. What a waste of my time. It's not so much the death and having to do it again. It's the time that must be taken to do it again. It's a waste of time. And it's frustrating. Alright. Off we go again. It's like deja vu. Is it not? No, this is not the path to the final boss, but what I'm doing is ultimately taking me to the final boss, yeah. Because to access the final boss, you need to have all of the boss souls of the main bosses of the game. And I'm making my way towards one of those bosses now. Ultimately. It is the bed of chaos. That is the boss that I'll be fighting this time around. And once you are able to offer all of those souls, you will then be able to access the final boss. The final boss is accessed from one of two possible locations. Um, either King Seeker Framped, who is in Firelink Shrine, or Darkstalker Karth in the Abyss, where you fight the Four Kings. And you can choose to access the Kiln of the First Flame through either of those NPCs. And there are law implications for which one you support. And interestingly, Darkstalker Karth, as I understand, is the better of the two. absolutely hate that it's requiring two hits here. Or more than two, I should say. Why are you still alive? What's your problem? Get out of here. Come on. 
How did you miss? Could have tried harder than that. Do not know how that missed the head. Don't know how that missed. Ugh. It's been a long time since I was playing FPS games on a controller, so you're going to have to forgive me. I'm not saying this is an FPS, I'm just saying that, you know, FPS skills would translate into more effective sniping in this case. Could quick scope him. That's not much of a quick scope. I did my best though. Alright. Ah. It's annoying to do all that again, but whatever. Get out of here. And get out of here. I was hoping to get you as well. I hate how they track you. Again, my poise has been of great help. I timed that so poorly. Now, I was pretty sure that I'd be able to avoid that if I was close enough to him. Can you just fucking hurry up with your attacks? God, you're annoying. Who wants to fight the fucking Taurus Demon again? Not me. And I'm going to ignore that Capra Demon up there. I don't care about him anymore. I won't even give him the satisfaction of dying at my... Or dying by my hand. Dying at my hand is fine too. Okay. Boss time. Demon Fire Sage. The third time we get to fire the same boss, basically. Which is one of the only issues I have with this game. It is the fact that they reuse this design. It was perfectly fine to have it be two fights. Like, that was fine, because fighting the stray demon was an opportunity to almost see how, how far you've come. You fought the original asylum demon, and, you know, that might have been a struggle, might not have been. But either way, the stray demon is obviously a much harder fight than the original version and um, you can see how you've progressed. If you're wondering why I dealt all that damage, by the way, that was bleed. I'll shield this from the central point or not. Fuck off. Still got me. But yeah, I think the fact that they made us fight it again was a little bit over the top. <laughs> Killed him mid-air. Hello, potato. Thank you for the follow absurd hero. And that is the Islith Catalyst, I think. Or is it the... No, that's the Demon Catalyst. And I don't want it, obviously. Well, I'm glad you enjoy the format. This is the way my recordings go. Just sit back, relax, and play the game. Don't have time to scream at my audience. I'll never have time for that. Alrighty, so we are now looping back to the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire. And I don't know if it's worth going and purchasing Homeward Bones. The reason why is because, I mean, as much as I would like to have more Homeward Bones than what I currently have, I don't really want to take the journey to the female undead merchant, to be honest. So I think I'll just stick with three Homeward Bones. It should be enough. Actually, it's not really enough. Because I'm going to need Homeward Bones for the Daughter of... Not that. Uh, Daughter of Chaos is the bonfire. I'm going to need the Homeward Bones for the Bed of Chaos. So, okay, I'll go and buy some more. I'll get myself up to 10. Or I couldn't 
alternatively get even more. We'll see how I feel. But, uh, I think we will level up with these souls also. I just don't like sitting on too many souls. Yes, it is more satisfying to level up with many souls. In other words, leveling up several stats at a time. But I just don't want to run the risk of somehow losing these souls in the Caterpillar Demon boss fight room. I have very little desire for that. It's not too bright, is it? No. I'm referring to my webcam view. I'm a little bit too far in the corner, actually, so I'll shift myself. I don't like to be too far in the corner. Okay. Here I go again, taking this journey. We're going to the female undead merchant, though, not the male one. The female one is on the way to lower undead bird, as opposed to upper undead bird. <laughs> hmm. I mean, you wouldn't know that it was female, would you? Alright, should I buy more than what I would need to get 10? No, that's enough. I somehow feel like I would be... I feel like my souls would be better spent for leveling up at this point. Because in the future, I could just get a bunch of souls and buy whatever homeward bones I need. Rather than buying lots of homeward bones now, with souls that could be used to level me up now, <laughs> if that makes any sense. This just feels like a better decision. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just homeward boned, but I, I'm not doing that. Let us return to the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire. We will rest at the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire so that that is our spawn point. Which, I mean, alternatively, we could just rest at the bonfire leading up to the Caterpillar Demon. I think it's called the Caterpillar Demon, right? Hopefully I'm not remembering that wrong because that would be dumb otherwise, but I think that's correct. Centipede Demon. Caterpillar Demon. <laughs> Did I say Centipede or Caterpillar originally? Like when I first said it. Centipede Demon. Caterpillar. For fuck's sake. Oh, Doom Link. But, um, yeah, Centipede. That should be correct. Ugh. As far as how much longer this recording is going to go for, I would say that I will continue until I finish Lost Isler. It's not going to take me too long. Oh, come on. Cease this behavior. Wait, we don't want to go that way. <laughs> yes, Caterpillar Demon does sound too friendly, doesn't it? I did end up going the long way, I think, to get here, but at least I don't have to deal with those stupid fire-breathing fat things. Yeah, I might rest at this bonfire. Why not? It's not like I'm going to lose my 10 Estus Flasks by resting at a Bonfire Intensity 1 bonfire. I could have just instead phrased that Intensity 1 bonfire instead of Bonfire Intensity 1 bonfire. <laughs> that would have been slightly more articulate of me. Alright. Um. Oh, that's one thing that I didn't do. God, I'm fucking dumb. I took the time to... I mean, this is crazy. This is just how easily sidetracked I am. I actually took the time to gather some Twinkling Titanite and never used it to upgrade my armor pieces. Like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Seriously. So easily sidetracked. Alright. Now, this fight's kind of annoying. 
Because you have to navigate the lava and all that, so... I'm actually going to risk going here. I don't like doing this, because if I get thrown into the lava, it's really bad. Fortunately, that didn't happen. I can't actually snipe him. Alright. Now, it's very hard to see what the fuck's going on here. It's very hard to see what's going on. It's even harder when the frame rate is crap. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm keeping away because I can sense that you're doing something that would hurt. Yeah, don't want to be hit by any of that business. Gonna go for a follow-up. I knew that he was going for an attack of his own there. But I had a feeling that I could hit him before I could do it. Orange charred ring. Now, in the case of this game, there are actually two rings that are treated as key items would be, in the sense that they actually disappear when you enter New Game Plus. You do not keep the orange charred ring or the Covenant of Artorius ring when you enter New Game Plus. They disappear much like a key item would. So, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's uh, it is a gross boss fight. You're right about that. Very icky. Oh, look at that beautiful frame rate. I have to aim my camera down. Oh, just awful. But yeah, the orange charred ring, as you can clearly see, grants you considerable resistance to lava. And we're just making our way to the next bonfire, at which point we will, from there, be able to take on the boss of Lost Isleth, or the final boss of Lost Isleth. Would be the appropriate way to refer to that. Well, thanks for staying up late, absurd hero. This is a great hero soul. Yeah. I believe that is the best consumable soul in the game that isn't a boss soul. I'm being attacked by one of those stupid copy and paste creatures from the zombie dragon who rips his body in half in the painted world. Really silly. Well, anyway. Alright. This is really dangerous. Ugh. Fortunately, you can actually do a run and jump through an invisible wall. It acts as an attack. <laughs> Alright, again I will level up. Just leveling it up leveling up a little bit at a time. I will put these away. Now it's time to go and visit the Bed of Chaos. The way in which I fight the Bed of Chaos, and I will say this for the benefit of those who didn't see me fight the Bed of Chaos in the previous build, basically I take it as carefully as I can. I homeward bone twice during the fight, because you can actually clear stages of the fight and have it save each time you enter the fight again. So what I do is I I attack one side, homeward bone, attack the other side, homeward bone, and then I return to kill the bed of chaos. And that's basically the way that I kill the bed of chaos in one try. I almost can't do it in one try. I basically cannot unless I homeward bone. Because it's just too... It's not even worth it. It's not worth the fucking headache, so... I will kill you. Because you are gross. Ew. It's a Red Titanite Chunk. He's the guy that you kill for Red Titanite Chunks if you're using a Chaos Weapon, for example. and Or a few Chaos Weapons, especially. 
Come to think of it, I do need to, before taking on the boss, deal with something else. And that is the Prowling Demon and the door to the Sunlight Maggots. So the Prowling Demon of Lost Isleth, again for the benefit of anyone who doesn't know, is the only respawning Prowling Demon in the game. And he's very strong. He's the strongest. That's why he respawns. Didn't, didn't want to get caught in that. Really didn't want to. It's very easy to get caught in. I'll stop this. As you can see, he hits very, very hard. And although you haven't seen it yet, he's got a lot of health. Yeah, it's great when you've got iframes, man. It's great. I love it. I wouldn't ask for anything else. As you can see, the amount of stamina needed to shield his attacks plus attack him back is absurd. I'll tell you one thing that's fucking absurd, though. The amount of space that I'm expected to fight this guy in. It's very tight. It's kind of easy to get thrown off the edge. I'm doing this for the... Quaylang's Fury Sword, by the way. Damn it. I was actually expecting him to do his jump there. Now he's doing his jump. There you go. And it's a guaranteed two Demon Titanite every time. But yeah, he's pretty hard. He's not an easy fight. What I would say is that he's not crushingly difficult, but I do still sometimes fail the fight with him. Oh, come on. What a load of crap. Alright, so these Sunlight Maggots here, one of them has a guaranteed chance to drop a headpiece, and it's the one with the glowing eyes. I saw it back there, but I'm still killing these things anyway. They have a chance to drop Sunlight Medals, not that I want them. But yeah, not all of them have glowing eyes, but can you fucking get over here? Yeah, the, um, the one with the glowing eyes... Can you see those red eyes over there? He has a guaranteed chance to drop. A very nice headpiece, which I use for the Tomb of the Giants. Give it to me. That's the Sunlight Maggot. It basically produces light passively while you have it equipped. Like so. And you can't really see how much light is being produced here. But I can assure you that... In the Tomb of the Giants, it's remarkably effective. Again, these guys have a chance to drop Sunlight Medals, so if you don't... If you want to level up the Covenant of Sunlight, but don't want to fight any uh, invaders... Invaders... As a summoned phantom, then this is what you do. Why not quit out instead of bone? In what circumstance? Oh. I suppose that works, yeah. Does that reset? Okay, I'll give that a try. Home and boning might be a much slower process. <laughs> For bed of chaos. Well, I've never seen people quit out, but yeah, I guess that can be done. So I'll give that a try. That would make the process a lot fucking faster. I hadn't thought of doing that myself. But yeah, I just, I don't do it all in one hit because it's just... It's a rather unforgiving boss fight.
So I just assumed that it would have put me in the same place where I had quit. But I guess not. Alright. So I'll probably use Quelang's Fury Sword for the Tomb of the Giants. That might be fun. Because it will at that point be fully upgraded. So the easiest part of the fight is destroying the first thing that you want to aim for. I usually go from the left to the right. I can't believe it didn't hit it. I'll try quitting and reloading. Let's see what happens. I don't think I've done this before. Oh, could always learn something new, even if you've played the game so many times. Always something new to learn. Hurry up. So damn slow. Alright. Where does it put me? There you go. That's a whole lot faster. I will definitely be doing that from now on. It's pretty slow in there. Xbox 360 version to quit and reload, but it's still faster than Homeward Burning, so... Yeah, that's pretty good. Ugh, terrible frames, honestly. Oh, you motherfucker. I had my shield raised for that, and it still didn't do anything. Get away from me. Bloody bastard. I think it's probably better to just... Oh, come on. Give over. Alright. And then quit and reload again. I get to select the hard drive as my storage device. Great. Love doing that. Then I get to see through all this crap. Which I believe can be skipped in the PC version, and probably in the remastered version. Okay. And that should be the last time I need to do that. Now we will go straight through and finish off the bed of chaos. I like rolling because it cancels the animation so that you may slide. What would be hilarious is if you rolled and then you start tumbling down. They do a special animation where you actually tumble down. That'd be pretty funny. Just avoid that. Hold on. So the best place to... I'm just trying not to time it poorly. Oh, fuck off with you! Shockingly, I wasn't killed. I'd better take this opportunity while I'm given it. Fucking hell. Well, that was a fluke, if ever I've seen one. Okay, so... Drop from the spot that juts out, and you'll be... You'll be all good. Can't believe I survived that. Just as well, huh? Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> now that's problematic in New Game Plus and beyond, I have to tell you. Taking that hit. There are ways to avoid it, it's just, it is problematic, I will tell you. Because obviously in New Game Plus 2 and Plus 3 and Plus 4, it's a, it's a one-shot. So it makes things pretty annoying. Okay. 
think we will go back to Filing Shrine. Was there something else I was going to do? I feel like that. Yeah, level up Quelang's Fury Sword. That's what we're going to do. I don't think Andre can level up Quelang's Fury Sword. I'll just go to the giant blacksmith. Oh, I am quite fine with doing that. But before doing that, I've got some souls to level up with. I will give you an update on my soul counter in just a minute. Come on. Alright, we are sitting on 130,000, 131,186. Okay. So shall we put some points here? Let's take you to 45. That'd be good. I would be quite happy with that. And this will be plenty of souls to level up the Quelag's Fury Sword. Head over to the Chamber of the Princess Bonfire. And then we'll probably use Quelang's Fury for the Tomb of the Giants. And then after Tomb of the Giants, we will take on the rest of the DLC. And then it will be time for us to fight Gwyn and finish the game. We'll do the rest of that in the next video. So Tomb of the Giants, rest of the DLC, and Gwyn will be in the next recording. I may as well equip Quelang's Fury Sword now. I haven't been using the... Uh, you know what I could do? I could go and use this baby. Oh, I still... That's right. I was supposed to put points into Endurance for that. Well, whatever. I did end up putting points into Endurance, but... Yeah, I really didn't end up using that uh, Flamberge, did I? Well, it is what it is. Oh, that's right. It's dark and I wonder, so you're not here. Very good. Very good. I don't know why. I swear to God, they got a guy to yell into a cardboard tube. <laughs> like a packaging tube. To, to do that. Very good. It's just like really bizarre. And that's right. I'm glad I remembered. I can't believe that I remembered, but I did. Oh, I want to level you up. Or, well, not level you up, you know what I mean. Reinforce would be the term. Thanks, Doom Link. Alright. What's our defense now? 239. Pretty good. Okay. So I think that might conclude this recording. I will home and bone back to Filing Shrine. And yeah. I think that's all. So again, in the next recording I will do Tomb of the Giants, the rest of the DLC, which will include Manus and Calamite, and then we will kill Gwyn and finish the game. That should be pretty easy to do within the space of about two hours, I would say, in the next recording. If it ends up being three hours, then fair enough. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that. But, um, yeah, next week is when that will be recorded. And indeed, I will also be doing Sonic 06 at some point. But I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you when I'm next recording something that you would like to watch that I am recording. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.